On this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to fix these fixed wires if you cannot move them or relocate them. So stay tuned. Welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you could always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. So I'm in the process of renovating my kitchen. I took out one of my these cabinets. Come to find out, I came across this and the previous owner, I'm believing, did not know how to run the wires through the studs going up to the attic. So they pretty much just ran it across the top plate. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you the proper way on how to bury this and make it flush. So just a quick disclaimer, we are going to be working with electrical components today. My electrical codes and your electrical codes might be different. So always make sure that you're always current with your current local electrical codes. Make sure you have the proper permits and make sure you always turn off the power from your circuit breaker whenever you're working with electricity. And if you're unconfident and unsure about working with electrical, please contact a certified and qualified electrician. With that being said, my full disclaimer is in the description down below. Now before we go start fixing this issue, I'm going to go and reference two items with you and this is the IRC, this is the International Residential Codebook and the NEC, the National Electrical Codebook 2020 edition. Now if you're interested in these two books, I'll leave a link in the description down below so you can use this for your reference. So clearly you can see that the electrical wire is right on top of the face of the top plate. Now let's go with the IRC and what it says on R602.6 the drilling and notching of top plates. So it references that piping or ductwork can be placed on and notched through the studs just like this. As if it's 50%, then you will have to put a plate right over. But this is just wire. We're not going to be notching more than 50%. We're actually only going to be doing probably like half inch to the max on this. So now if we go by the NEC 2020 electrical code book, 300.4 a2 it says notches in wood where there is no objection because of weakening the building structure in both exposed and concealed locations cables or raceways shall be permitted to be laid in notches in wood studs joists rafters etc but we can use a 1.6 millimeter thick plate now that is the one we're going to be using as long as it's no violation of weakening of the structure now if you look at that picture right there it is going to be going through the ceiling joist which is the two by six and depending on what sizes you are, just use the chart accordingly. And as long as it's not in the middle of the third of the span of the joist, then you should be okay. This location, we are not in the middle of the one third span. We are actually closer to the outer one third span. Now, if you have any questions on that, leave a comment down below and I'll be gladly to show you and explain to you what that means. So I want you to take note that this technique is only made for certain situations. For example, if you have an electrical wire that's going straight to the breaker, AKA like a home run, and it's going through a bunch of studs and it's stapled in many places, then this technique is very applicable. Also, when rerouting a wire is not practical, meaning that you can't just disconnect one end of the wire from an electrical outlet or an electrical switch, take that out and then you can bore a hole right through the stud. This is when the situation you can actually use this and it is applicable. Now we're going to go and prep that up. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take all, all my drop, get my measurement. Now I'm going to go and take out this portion so that I can slide the wire to the right and make those notches so I don't inadvertently cut the wire. So I suggest if you have an oscillating tool, go use that. It makes the job super fast and easy and precise. Just be very, very careful when you're doing this so you don't inadvertently cut the wire. Again, make sure that the power is out from the breaker before for working with any type of electrical here i'm just going to be using the top part now before you even do this i kind of forgot to let you know that before you go and cut start cutting up above you don't know what's up there and i'll be showing you a trick to that later now if there's any staples please remove them and use um, a pry here i'm just using a flathead screwdriver to help and now we can move this to the right so that we can notch and not this will not get in the way so just cut accordingly now I'm just going to measure up with my square and my pencil and just go and mark out where I'm going to be notching this. Now the easiest way that I figured to actually notch this is pretty much cut little cuts and then go in angles. Just, just like what you're seeing here, I'm cutting an angle so I can take out about half inch. But I believe that using this chisel, this half inch chisel works really well too for finishing just in case you can't reach some angles or whatnot. Now I should have mentioned this earlier, but whenever you're drilling or cutting through drywall and you don't know what's behind there, it is good practice to use one of this endoscope. This is depth stack endoscope that I use a lot. It has a camera and a light at the end and you can connect it to your smartphone 
What's great is that you can enter this through a hole that you, before you do any cutting, you can actually see what's up there or behind the wall before you do any cutting so you don't end up cutting any piping, cable, or anything that will probably cause you more damage than what you do when you're doing the repair. So I highly suggest that you get one of these so that you don't end up doing and make costly mistakes. I'll leave the link on the description down below if you need one. Okay, so we're now after we checked and everything's good, I kind of cut too much on the right side. But it's okay, we'll just replace that with drywall. It's just drywall. Now here's a big don't know. You never want to bend your wire to a perfect 90 degree like this because it'll damage your wire. And just because you never want to do this, but since it's already like this, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I'm not going to bend it back. It'll probably cause damage to it. So I'm just going to go and make work my way around it. You're going to come across these situations where sometimes you just don't, you know, you just got to work through it and just pretty much go and do the best that you can so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna go and set this aside tape it so i don't end up cutting it while i notch it so i'm gonna cut these notches about a uh, half inch wide and another one going up to the ceiling joist again i'm going to be using my oscillating tool which is a very super helpful tool to use use the same technique as you did when notching on the other side and we're going to go cut in an angle and finish it off with the chisel, which again, this chisel will help you a lot in very weird situations. And this chisel will actually work really well and make you reach those weird angles that you cannot do with the oscillating saw. Now, here we go. We cut the channel and now we can easily set the wire right through those channels and it'll make it nice and flush. Here's the steel protector plate that I'll be using to protect those wires. Again, I'll leave the link on the description if you need these. I'm going to go and put one up on the ceiling joist so that I can hold that one in place so that we don't uh, end up putting any screws right through there. Same thing on these top plates. I'm going to be using two because there's two studs. And you're just going to go and kind of overlap them so that they look just like this. So there you have it. Now it's nice and protected. I left a little bit of room to the left to have a little space for any types of screws that you're going to be using and then going to be doing the same thing on the other side as well so here we go we're now we're just going to go replace it now with drywall just give it a good tap so make it fit and then you're just going to cut it the pieces so that you can make it nice and snug and fit then use your drywall screws make sure that everything is nice and secured Again, this one, and you come in certain situations where when you're putting this, it's going to go rock back and forth because you might have to do a little bit of relieving, just like what you see there. And you're just going to have to relieve and, you know, cut to fit different situations every time. And you're going to leave a little bit of space on the left to right for the screws. If you want to skip this part, it's totally up to you. But I'm now I'm just going to apply some um, joint compound over this. Um, I actually use mesh tape here or you can use paper tape depending up to you and I'm just going to be showing you how I use I use 20 minute joint compound and I'm only doing the first layer on this video so stay tuned for the next video and I'll be showing you how I properly use joint compound use the corner beads how I made this nice and flush and using two types of different material which is paper or the sheet metal type corner bead as well so let me know in the comment section also if you have any questions make sure you tune in for my next video if you found this video helpful please hit that big thumbs up press the subscribe notification bell and i'll see your friends on the next diy